Hi, this is Gary LaRoot. I'm the technical editor of Microwave Journal, and I'm here with James Klein, who's the president of Corvo's infrastructure and defense products business. James, I appreciate your making time for us today. Thanks for having me. So let's start with the big announcement you guys are making, and we appreciate the opportunity to tell everybody first. You're converting your four-inch GAN line in Richardson to six-inch. What's the motivation behind that? Well, we're excited as well. We see great opportunities in GAN. We've been a leader in the defense market. Uh, we've been a leader in cable TV. And now we really see some of our other commercial activities coming on as well. And, uh, and we're to the point where we need the capacity. So we're converting into six inch there in Texas and take us about a year. We've done some initial demos, demonstrated some great performance and we're on our path. So is it fair to say that one of the motivations would be the base station infrastructure market? Absolutely, that's uh, probably the most cost sensitive market and, and really we see some elasticity based on costs. So we're going to drive to a smaller format. We're also working on things like packaging and others to get the cost down. And, uh, and we think we'll be rewarded there with some great volumes. So some of your competition feels like GAN on silicon is a better approach than GAN on silicon carbide. What's the rationale in your mind for sticking with GAN on silicon carbide? Well, the parts of the market that we really focused on are those very high performance parts of the market, higher frequency, higher power levels, and their thermal conductivity is a big part of the performance. So silicon carbide has great thermal conductivity. We're able to get the heat away from the device um, and demonstrate really world record kind of performance. So we've talked a little bit about infrastructure. What other commercial markets are you attacking? Because between RFMD and TriQuint coming together, you pretty much cover everything in the infrastructure space. Well, as I said earlier, we had a great position in defense. We've been in the market for a long, long time. We were also early into the cable market and have great market share there with GAN. Base station power is next, but we see opportunities in point-to-point -point radio. We've got products in VSAT. And we're also moving also into other products other than just power amplifiers. We've got low noise amplifiers coming as well. We're doing some work in limiters and other functions. Mm. So we really see a broad play for gallium nitride. And you've had, outside of gallium nitride, you've had a pretty strong position in optical. Is that a core market for you as well? Absolutely. So we continue to be excited about that market. We see the optical networks continue to grow around the world and we've got a great position in drivers. And we've also entered some of the other receive side components with our TIAs. And we're starting to do some new technologies. We've introduced some silicon parts into our lineup that get us to a lower power consumption than, than perhaps we've had in the past. Uh, we're going to higher levels of integration in that market as well. So optical remains a big thrust for us. So if I recall the TriQuint side of the house, you were one of the early players in automotive radar at 77 gigahertz. Where does automotive fit in your, your overall market strategy? Well, today for us, it's really a focus on the connected car. So certainly with LTE and Wi-Fi starting to proliferate and, and our position in satellite radio here in the United States, it continues to be a market that, that we address in multiple different areas. Um, we're excited about that growth as adoption rates start to increase on LTE and Wi-Fi. We think it gives us a good opportunity. There's some reports that say there could be as high as $15 of content uh, in cars. So that looks like a pretty good opportunity for the company. And how about 5G? There's a lot of discussion of 5G and particularly using some of the millimeter wave bands for some of that uh, data traffic. Well, this is really exciting times. I mean, you know, the data traffic growth across the industry is just driving so many new technologies like GAN for base station and other things. But 5G is really going to push the limits on data traffic. Now, for us, it's a great place to be. It's millimeter wave. We've been in millimeter wave for many, many years. Um, so we've got some very good technologies to support that, both in gas and GAN. Um, so we're partnered with some of the top OEMs in the business to supply that hardware. And, and we're seeing demos uh, in many frequency bands, as you, as you presented all the way up to E-band, but things that are going on in, uh, in um, a KA band, and in all honesty, uh, some of the frequencies that are down in the five to six gigahertz range as well. So a lot, a lot of demonstrations going on around the world. So let's flip over to the defense market. Clearly the, the heritage going back from TriQuint and TI, there's a long heritage in defense, and you have a pretty premier position in, I'd say, virtually every aircraft phased array that's certainly fielded by the U.S. How do you see the defense market uh, growing and evolving in the coming decade? Well, there's, there's quite a few advanced systems, both in comm and radar, that are really driving our content up. So we're growing much faster than the defense overall business. The component level part of the business is growing. And then we're doing better than that market as well. We're doing a lot of that with GAN products. We've released a tremendous amount of products into the defense market based on GAN, and those are, have really got great traction. 
And there's, you know, there's some new exciting platforms coming on as well. We've got ship-based and ground-based radars around the world that are starting to adopt new technologies going into phased arrays, and all those are great opportunities. Uh, in the airborne market, we see the retrofit market really taking off. We've been talking about that for the last couple of years. As F-16s start to get retrofit, that's also a nice business for us as well. So good growth there as well. Absolutely. We're ex we continue to be excited about the defense market. So you're about eight months into the time of Corvo since the merger was completed of RFMD and Triquint. How is that merger taking place? I mean, how are the, uh, the, the details taking place? You promised investors $150 million in synergies, and you're, you're working through all the rationalization details. Well, it's been going great. I mean, you know, you've seen our performance. We've done very well as a company. We, customers seem to continue to be excited. The investors seem to be excited. Mm -hmm. It's worked out great for our employee base as well. So I think the merger continues to do great. It wasn't a tremendous amount of overlap between the two companies, so that's made it, I guess, somewhat a little bit easier. Sure. And really been able to address markets that perhaps neither one of the prior companies were able to before. Um, so, so far it's great. I think we'll deliver on our synergy promises as we get through the end of the first year and uh, it's about $75 million and the end of the second year about $150 million of run rate and those projects are in place. So we're actively managing them uh, and I, I think we'll meet those commitments relatively easy. I think you have the responsibility for the company's technology roadmap and how do you see technology evolving over the next decade? Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, if you look at what we do inside IDP, our defense market really helps us develop technology. Uh, typically, our defense customers are pretty far out in the front, in yeah. front of the rest of the industry, and so that helps us generate some great new technology. You know, where I see things going, GAN, is interesting times. It's at the tipping point right now. We see a lot of new products. We've got quite a few processes that are support broad frequency range. So I think we're at that stage where all the engineers around the world are just starting to figure out how to use this great new technology. So I I think a lot of legs in GAN. We are doing advanced GAN work. We're doing work GAN on diamond to get mm. the thermal better and get power out. We're doing work to get up higher in frequency, so there's programs to get the FT up to 500 gigahertz or so. Um, so wow. just a significant yeah. amount of projects that are going inside the company to continue to push GAN. What's after that? I, I think it's a lure to the tail. As you talk to your boss and obviously the investors, um, what's the IDP strategy for growth? What are you, what are you trying to accomplish? Well, first of all, I, I, IDP serves a great role in the company, uh, really around doing a lot of advanced technology. That helps us out a, a lot as a company. You know, our growth, there's some very good core markets that we participate in today. Uh, optical's one of those, certainly defense is one, our, our Wi-Fi and cable TV markets all offer us good growth opportunities. And then we're also very active in M&A, and so we've been pretty public about how we continue to look for acquisition candidates that, that support the business and, uh, and help diversify the business, so we'll continue in that path as well. And, you know, as an example, we made an acquisition a couple years ago to move into high-power amplifiers with our Spatium technology, and that's been a great acquisition for the company. allows us to leverage a couple of strengths, one with his GAN, um, and one our long heritage and power amplifiers. So that's, that's been a good acquisition. So with a new name, Corvo, and coming together with RFMD and Triquint, you're probably having to educate customers some on, on who you are, who this new company is. What's the impression you want customers to have when they think of Corvo? Well, we've got a tagline called All Around You, and if you look at that, we really are all around you. We want to make sure we're all around our customers and give them the right kind of support and, and really helping them with those challenging problems like 5G or, or putting GAN into the marketplace. So we certainly want them to see us as uh, great customer support, uh, great technology, all those sort of things. So I think that's uh, the tagline fits us well. Sounds very good. Thanks, James, for spending time with us today. All right. Well, I appreciate the time, Gary. Thanks.